I, it isn't as if intellectuals are characterized by an intrinsic moral superiority. Oh, they're smart, so they'll leap to the defense of what's right. It's like, no, there's no evidence for that. Intelligence and, and moral wisdom aren't the same thing. Like, and if you're corrupt and smart, all that makes you is way more treacherous. It doesn't make you less likely to be corrupt. It just makes you much more, you're 50 snakes instead of two, or you're 56 headed snakes instead of two. Like I've had clients who were, who had very serious personality disorders, who were very intelligent. It's like, that's not necessarily a good thing for them. They're just better at arguing for their pathology to themselves. That is a real problem where people automatically assume that intelligent people are going to be healthy. Yeah, well, they're healthy in that often they, they do better in the world, you know, because, because their, skills are, yes, their right. skills are more marketable and so on. But there's no evidence that there's any relationship between intelligence and morality. I mean, God, let me tell you a story, man. One time I had this client. This woman was just ruined. She looked like a street person, you know, and she had very dirty clothes, and she was so shy that she couldn't even approach you. She had to shield her eyes from you as if you were emitting light, and she did that to everyone on the street, like she was bent over and, 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 and humble, like a, like a Chinese peasant brought before the emperor, you know? And uh, one of the things I was doing with her in behavior therapy was trying to just get her to present herself in a more normal manner so that people wouldn't shy away from her and, you know, be instantly prejudiced towards her. And, and she'd come to the behavior therapy clinic. And she wasn't bright, this woman. I think she had only had like a seventh grade education. She was quite intellectually impaired. And she lived with her, her sick aunt who was, who was schizophrenic and who had a, like a, a satanically possessed alcoholic boyfriend that was always tormenting my client. She lived in absolute hell. But she had this dog, and she used to take it out and walk the dog all the time. And then she, she'd actually come to the behavior therapy clinic, partly because of her own problem, but, but she'd come to this place called the Douglas Hospital, and she'd been an inpatient in the Douglas Hospital. And in the, in the Douglas Hospital, there were these long-term psychiatric clients, and they looked like something out of a Hieronymus Bosch painting or Dante's Inferno. I mean, these people were... This is way worse than one flew over the cuckoo's nest. These people were seriously destroyed. And they couldn't be let back out on the streets during deinstitutionalization. Like, they were lifers. And she had decided that part of the reason she wanted to come to the hospital was because she had been institutionalized there. And she thought that maybe when she took her dog out for a walk, she could go and get one of those damn inmates and take them out for a walk, too. Now, that was a person who was immoral. Dumb as a post, just screwed in 50 different directions. Nothing going for her. And she had the bloody moral capacity to decide that there was someone worse off than her. And believe me, that wasn't easy to find. And that maybe she could do them some good if, if the hospital would let her. Which they didn't, by the way. Yeah, well, that's the story of the soul. That's not the intellect. That's for sure.